diabetes reversal should be a goal in the management of type 2 diabetes, not just treatment. Type 2 diabetes can be re reversed with an extremely low-calorie diet. Type 2 diabetes can be reversed with an extremely healthy diet. But is that because it's also low in calories? Uh, the study subjects lost as much weight on the green leafy vegetable-packed plant-based diet as this semi-starvation diet based on liquid meal replacements. Um, so it doesn't matter what you're eating, as long as you're eating few enough calories to lose 15 pounds a month. Well, even if diabetes reversal was just about calorie restriction, instead of subsisting off largely sugar, powdered milk, corn syrup, and oil, on a plant-based diet at least you can eat food, real food. In fact, pounds of food a day, as many low-cal veggies as you can stuff in your face. Uh, so even if it only worked because it's just another type of calorie-restricted diet, it's certainly a healthier version, but even participants who did not lose weight, or even gained weight eating enormous quantities of whole healthy plant foods, appeared to improve their diabetes. Thus, the beneficial effects of this kind of diet appear to extend beyond just the weight loss. The successful treatment of type 2 diabetes with a plant-based diet goes back to the 1930s providing incontestable evidence that a diet centered around vegetables, fruits, grains, and beans was more effective in controlling diabetes than any other dietary treatment. Randomized controlled trial. Insulin needs were cut in half. A quarter ended off of, uh, off of insulin altogether, but again, this was a low-calorie diet. Uh, Kempner at Duke reported similar results 20 years later with his rice and fruit diet for the first time, showing documented reversal of diabetic retinopathy in a quarter of his patients, something never even thought possible. For example, a 60-year-old diabetic woman, already blind in one eye, can only see contours of large objects with the other. Five years later on the diet, instead of it getting worse, it got better. She, now she can make out faces, see signs, large newspaper print, in addition to being off insulin with normal blood sugars and a 100-point drop in her cholesterol. Or from just being able to read big headlines in another patient to being able to read newsprint four months later. What was behind these remarkable reversals? Was it because the diet was extremely low fat, or was it because there was no animal protein and no animal fat, or was it because the diet was so restrictive and monotonous that the patients lost weight and improved their diabetes that way? So to tease this out, what we would need is a study where they switch people to a healthy diet, but force them to eat so much that they wouldn't lose any weight. Then we could see if a plant-based diet had benefits independent of all the weight loss. For that, we'd have to wait another 20 years, but here it is. Diets were designed to be weight-maintaining. So the subjects were weighed every day. If they started losing weight, they were made to eat more food. In fact, so much food, some of the participants had trouble eating it all. They're right? <laughs> like, ah, not another salad. Uh, but they eventually adapted, so there was no significant alterations in body weight, despite restrictions of meat, dairy, and eggs and enough whole plant foods, whole grains, beans, vegetables, and fruit, to provide 65 grams of fiber a day. That's four times what the standard American diet provides. The control diet they used was the conventional diabetic diet, which actually had nearly twice the fiber content of the standard American diet, so it was probably healthier than what these people were used to eating. Okay, so how'd they do? With zero weight loss, did the dietary intervention still help? Here's the before and after insulin requirements of the 20 people they put on the diet. This is the number of units of insulin they had to inject themselves with before and after going on the plant-based diet. Overall, insulin requirements were cut about 60%. Half were able to get off insulin altogether, despite no change in weight. So uh, was this after five years or seven months, like in the other studies I showed? No, 16 days. So we're talking diabetics who've had diabetes as long as 20 years, injecting 20 units of insulin a day, then as few as 13 days later, they're off insulin altogether, thanks to less than two weeks on a plant-based diet. Patient 15, 32 units of insulin on the control diet, and then 18 days later on none lower blood sugars on 32 units less insulin. That's the power of plants. And as a bonus, their cholesterol dropped like a rock, 
in 16 days. You just like moderate changes in diet, usually result in only modest reductions in cholesterol, asking people with diabetes to make moderate changes often achieves equally moderate results, which is one possible reason why most end up on drugs, injections, or both. Everything in moderation may be a truer statement than people realize. Moderate changes in diet can leave one with moderate blindness, moderate kidney failure, moderate amputations, maybe just a couple toes. Moderation in all things is not necessarily a good thing. The more we ask as physicians from our patients, the more we get. You know, the old adage, you know, shoot for the moon, seems to apply. It may be more effective than limiting patients to small steps that may sound more manageable, but are not sufficient to actually stop the disease.